All right, boys, back again. I got myself a 360 hertz monitor. It is an Asus PG259QN. It is not the Asus PG259QNR. That's the one with the reflex module. That's the one I actually wanted, but it's not out yet as of the recording. As of the voiceover, March 16th, which is today, 2021, the reflex module version of the Asus monitor, the Asus PG259QNR, does exist and it is available for purchase. The PG259QN non-R is the one that you are seeing in this video. This video was recorded December 20th, 2020. And you can see me going through the unboxing. It comes with power cable, USB, HDMI, and a display port. And they're nice cables, honestly. Even the stand is nice. The monitor did cost $700 pre-tax, so 360Hz is expensive. Um, I don't do a UFO test in this video. I mainly just show how I set it up. A little bit of wire management and launch a game where I can actually get around 360FPS. Uh, so I launched Fortnite and COD. Fortnite and Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The colors are nice. Power brick is small. It's like a laptop charger, so that's cool. The stand really does feel like good quality overall in general. It's a nice monitor. I really like it. I'm not going to do the whole debate, do you need to spend more money, is 144Hz good enough, 60Hz to 144Hz, and then after 144Hz is 240Hz worth, is 360Hz even noticeable? Um, I'm not debating this, uh, most of the people, look, I like Linus, I like Gamers Nexus, you know, they run tests, I like hardware and box but I'm not a liar, all right? I see bar graphs from Battle Nonsense, and uh, I'm a man of science, so I believe it. But when they say, oh, this is the difference, you don't see it in real life, that's bullshit. So, Wardsy, um, if you wanna check him out, he's a mouse reviewer. He, in his opinion, he said you should only watch reviews from people your age and or you're you know if you're a boomer stick with your boomer news boomer stocks boomer reviews and yeah live a good life uh, if you're a millennial same thing zoomer whatever <laughs> i guess it's 2021 right so the new ones gen c covid babies but yeah you can definitely see a difference and it feels really nice I, as you guys know, have an OLED as my main monitor, and I got it because I was fed up with IPS panels. But going from 360 hertz to the OLED, ooh, bro, 360 hertz is really fast. I have a buddy who also did the same thing, and he believes that the visual clarity is better on the OLED even though it's only 120 hertz because it's, you know, OLED, super fast, super fast response. Um, I didn't say input lag, notice I said response time of the panel, right? It's OLED, basically instantaneously refreshes. And if you use BFI with it, really fast. But this, for an IPS panel, really nice. And now I finally get why people say they use a 24.5 inch screen for gaming, FPS, competitive FPS. Using, honestly, 27 inch, 
240 hertz on the left you see right now kind of makes you nauseous i'm not gonna lie i never understood it the 24.5 inch for shooters really nice like it's a sweet spot it's really nice i didn't want to buy this monitor i wasn't even supposed to like it i have the portable 240 hertz that was supposed to be the high refresh rate you know and then when i got a 27 inch hdr monitor 1440p why would i buy this you know but i really like it honestly um if you actually play fps you get enough fps or you can actually feel the difference i would really only recommend it if you're like you know younger and you have the money or your parents or whatever you know for you can get a christmas gift and you actually play fps games like all the time and you know you can feel the difference but if you're older and you're not going to notice it don't buy it uh, it really is one of those if you play fps games you're going to notice that it's faster and if you're coming from a 240 hertz tn to this it's, yeah it's worth my cousin went from the asus vg259 q m i think it's that look it's the 24.5 uh, 24.5 inch 280 hertz 1080p monitor and i don't want to call it like hey that's the defective version of this like the defective panels from this 1080p 360 hertz monitor goes to that but in a simple way of putting it i9 10900k 10 cores 20 threads you know maybe it does a 5.2 gigahertz all core overclock then a 10850k 10 cores 20 threads Maybe it does a five gigahertz all core overclock. So you see how it's like the same thing, just a lower bin. It's similar to that. Um, I haven't played Fortnite in forever. So obviously I wasn't gonna win, but I was shocked to make it to number three. So that was pretty cool. After this, I launched COD. If you guys have any questions, you can just comment at the bottom, but pretty late with this video. so probably seen reviews from everybody already but i am launching cod and now it is going to force me to watch that season two or whatever season warzone update it is i would recommend checking out artings their review for what the input lag response time contrast ratio everything is i did calibrate all of my ips monitors srgb 6500k kelvin uh, 120 nits gamma 2.2 i'm pretty happy with it honestly as you can see in call of duty settings on the top right, you can see NVIDIA, you know, the little overlay. CPU utilization, GPU utilization. Gotta love it when Call of Duty resets your settings and turns the race racing on for no reason. I'm pretty sure in the last video I did the LG CX. So the GPU settings you guys know. The CPU, I really struggle a lot trying to get Ryzen RAM timings. Just, honestly, it's a shit show. Uh, as you can see right now, my max FPS looks pretty good, but my 99 percentile is uh, terrible. And that's because it's not properly optimized RAM timings. I know I was doing SMT off and then trying to run it one by one and auto RAM timings and it's just like, it's terrible. I'm doing a great job honestly with playing with this and look at the max FPS, 240 far, 144, 171. Like it's a lot of FPS, but the 99% FPS, as you can see the NVIDIA performance overlay, 
it's terrible and those are the drops you feel is this how a 5950x should be running with smt off uh no but i have two kits of memory 33 33 cl 16 32 gigs memory 2x two 16 gig dims and then i have 4000 megahertz cl 18 two 32 gig dims and the funny thing is the 4000 megahertz memory said it was optimized horizon yep that's not true at all because it never worked and when you load up the xmp profile it's gonna automatically clock the memory at 4000 megahertz but then the f clock was like 1800 so obviously you guys know that's not one by one and then you always have issues the only I, I really spent a lot of time trying to just do it 3600 megahertz CL 16 and those are similar in latency 3600 megahertz CL 16 is still a bit faster than 4000 megahertz CL 18 but you need to win the silicon lottery and to have no uh, WAS, W H E A S, Windows hardware errors. Basically, 2000 F clock doesn't work, and you got to be really lucky. Now, 1800, yeah, that'll work. 1900, that's usually the max. Um, I, I really wish it worked. I really wish. Um, I spent a lot of money, and I was really hoping that I could get the chip to work, but no. And here you go, my game crashed. And after this, I follow up with going to Ryzen Master, I tweak some settings, and I go back to playing Ram Hero, because that's the best game. I paid $800 for the CPU, not including tax. $200 for a motherboard, not including tax. For those stupid ITX risers, not including tax, to play RAM Hero. Now somebody's gonna say, well, you should just go out and buy 3800 MHz CL14 memory. Yeah, I shouldn't have to do that after I read slideshows showing Zen 3 will work with 4000 MHz, 2000 F clock. Yeah, that wasn't true at all. But hey, this is the video. Look forward to the next one. Thank you, enjoy, and peace.